So today our guest is Rishab Dev. He is an entrepreneur, growth marketing and e-commerce consultant, author of 101 Ways to Grow Your Startup and a founder of two businesses. Thank you for making the time, Rish. Thanks, Tatiana. Thanks for having me. So let's start with a bit of background. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I started off uh, freelancing as a digital marketeer, and this was back when SEO was the only thing in digital marketing. There was no social media. And uh, from there, I evolved to taking up more customers, hiring more people, working with another, you know, other freelancers, a network of freelancers, in fact. So I transitioned to making my own agency, digital marketing agency in 2012. And I've been doing that for the last 10 years. And recently I've started my own tech startup, which is a social mobile app for learning. So have been in the social media for quite a while now, even before it existed, to be honest. So starting with SEO and then transitioning to different disciplines of digital marketing. And 10 years, that's that's quite some time. Like you mentioned, you started before everybody started going on social media. How do you feel Feel has social media changed how businesses do marketing and how they manage their brands? Sure. So for me, it's always, you know, following where the user goes. So if the user is on social media, then the brand has to be on social media. I've seen the journey wherein, you know, brands were like, all right, do we need a website? And then it was like, we do need a website, but it should just talk about the business. Then it was like, we need a website, but it should talk about the customer. So getting closer to the customer. Then it was like, we need a website where users can do something and interact with the website. Then it was like, hey, people now are on mobile. So we need a website that loads on mobile. Then it was like, we're now going social. So we need a business page on social that links back to the website. So it's always been a journey wherein the businesses have followed the user, which is the right track to go on. And uh, I, I often hear some businesses who follow the algorithms and I tell them, just come back to follow the user. Because once you follow mm. the user, you are going to be on track with the algorithms as well, because whether it's Google, it's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's LinkedIn, YouTube, whichever channel it is, it just wants to do what the user wants, right? So a user appreciates a certain kind of content, it's going to get pushed. You can call it the algorithm, you can call it user behavior, but essentially it's all about following the user. So through that journey, I've seen how this landscape has changed is essentially when a user goes to a website, the communication is limited to the brands talking about them or the consumer, how they can solve their problems but now it's other people in the picture right so having a social conversation uh, means that it's more important for brands to understand how people are talking to each other mm -hmm. about them. We always say that, you know, branding is about how people talk about you when you are not there. That kind of conversation has been coming in the forefront with social media. Brands who were able to adapt to that were the first movers in that space. Something that you said there when you mentioned when brands discovered that they actually have to be on social media as well. You had that line, they have to have a social media page that leads back to their website. And I feel that's very important. I had a conversation yesterday with a woman who is specializing in content writing. We touched on that, which I think is very similar with social media and how people do their marketing, where people end up over-focusing on the algorithms instead of actually thinking about the user. What advice would you give entrepreneurs on getting that balance right? It's all is a compromise between two things, right? There is also a sweet spot, like a balance, which you can achieve between the two. Now, if you look at the funnel, there is impressions and reach at some point. And then towards the bottom of the funnel, we have conversions. And at somewhere in between, you will have to eventually get the people in your own list. Within the different channels that we have, some of them, you are much closer to the audience than other channels. And it also depends on the level of engagement. So let me give you an example. A simple like on Facebook, Facebook page on your Facebook page could be farther away from you versus someone who comments on your post regularly. Mm. Could be farther away from you to someone who is now in your newsletter and opens your email regularly. This is your data. And then eventually you have your CRM, you have your customers who are really close to your brand. You literally have their phone numbers, you have calls with them. It's not that, you know, there is a person who you have the data for, who you own and who another channel owns. 
for me, it's a huge spectrum. And um, I, I want brands to also understand that there are different points on this spectrum. And you also have to consider that, you know, somewhere in the middle of the funnel is in the middle of the spectrum. And that's where that person should be. You cannot force every view that you get on a YouTube video to be in your list, right? It's always a funnel. And that's the reason why it's a funnel. So there is a place where each audience member or viewer engagement belongs. And uh, not every click deserves a name. Brands should also realize that it's okay. You know, I think we have to take it with a pinch of salt that, you know, social media is here to stay. People are going to be on social apps more than they will be on your own website, right? Mm. Which is not a bad thing. However, you need to figure out that there is a percentage of those people that you should be having closer to you, that you should be having in your email mm. list, should be having brand conversations with. Within that, you should have segments of people you want to have closer conversations with and just accept the fact that this is how the funnel and the world of marketing works. You have two brands yourself at the moment that you're working at. Um, tell me a bit about them. Sure. So Maplinks is my digital marketing company and Maplinks has three business verticals. So it has services, wherein we do digital marketing for our clients. It has consulting where I personally go on consulting calls with clients. And finally, it has the academy where entrepreneurs and marketeers can learn digital marketing skills. And this has been my main business for the last 10 to 12 years. And recently, I noticed that there is a trend with short videos picking up on Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, you know, is the biggest one. A lot of these videos for entertainment. And I wanted to bring in some educational value to that ecosystem. So I launched EduPops, which is a short video video app for learning. So you can learn with short one minute videos, just like you would do with a social media. App. And uh, that's the second brand that I'm building. And as you've seen, which you also mentioned with names, you know, I've chosen the names very carefully, Maplings and Edupops. Um, I mean, I have a few rules when it comes to naming my companies. The first one, which is the hardest, is that I should have the .com domain available for the names. <laughs> not like any other domain names outside of the .com. Um, I know that people have different opinions on this one, but for me personally, I just feel .com is my preferred domain name. And uh, with the names, you know, I think that the most important thing is one, that you have a story. And second, mm -hmm. that the name can either tell a story by itself, or at least you can tell a story about the name to your customers. And uh, the third and the final thing is that the story should connect with the name to the people. You know, basically, if there is a story and there is a connection, then you have a good name. Uh, Maplinks is all about digital marketing. And if you if you boil down to the unit economics of digital marketing, it's all about links. It's all about UI. Mm. Like eventually, link is what gets you from one place to another. All your tracking is links. All your sharing is links. You know, it could be a video, it could be audio, it could be text, but eventually link is the currency of the digital mm -hmm. marketing. And building a map of these links is the concept that we do with a digital marketing agency. We are essentially building a huge map of links. And and uh, that's how I came up with the name Maplings. So yeah, that's the story behind the first name. But Edu Pops, you know, it's um, it sounded pretty nice to me. I was looking at uh, different names and uh, I wanted to make short videos for educational value. So Edu comes from there and Pops is just, it pops up. It's it's short, it's quick. Even if you, even if you see the name TikTok, it's that ring to it. Um, so I have the ring, I have the story. People like the name, you know, when they hear Edu Pops, short videos for learning, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so it absolutely makes sense. And uh, a bit more on Edupops, is it targeted at a specific audience age? How does it work? Who can benefit from that? So I'm quite sure this would appeal a lot to Gen Z and millennials both, considering that, you know, they love bite-sized short content. Also considering the fact that attention spans are lower. So it makes sense for them to be able to consume on the go, as well as I would say any busy professionals. So young professionals, entrepreneurs, marketeers, you know, they may not have time to take a long 10 hour course and they might just want to get a summary. So this is mm. the same reason why book summaries are so much more popular now than the original books, because, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they purpose in different ways. They have many more views. Sometimes if you collectively add the views of a video of book summaries versus a full version of a book, it's going to surpass the book readers. So that's how popular, you know, summaries and short form content is. For creators of content, do you create the content and then uh, people can consume it? Or can you have creators on the platform that can share their content in that format? Absolutely. So we are moving from the first to the second. Initially, we were curating content and, you know, I create a lot of content online. So I have a lot of videos on Edupops. I have friends who have, uh, you know, mega influencers. 
micro influencers, all of these people who have videos on Edupops. And eventually now we are developing the platform wherein people can come in, create videos, edit them and post them. That's the mm-hmm. next phase development so we are still pretty early stage but this is the uh, this is the progression right i mean the evolution of schooling is a bit slow in my opinion mm. so we had school uh, and then we have the digital classroom we need a school 3.0 now you know which is basically mm. like an upgraded version because i mean even as a school you are a business and your user your target audience your student is changing right so you have to adapt mm. how they are changing it's the same uh, same process in terms of the main names how do you see their importance change over time so one of the you know bigger trends that i'm noticing is that so i used to just to give you a background i used to buy domains all the time and this was a hobby of mine so i would collect mm. domains like you know my friends would collect baseball cards or something so i would mm-hmm. i would like to collect these you know domains and i was in uh, back in college you know i was just buying domains and i was seeing you know what are the domains that have the right keywords and if i have the right keywords then i can probably sell it to someone who wants to create a business around that keyword and uh, i see that with smart branding for example so that's cool because we have the keyword in the domain and it's very mm-hmm. easy to uh, there are two simple words that people know. People already know those words. They'll always remember this, and it has the flow. You know, this is a great template to start with. Another one I've seen is a is a great trend. In between, I saw that you know there were trends that come in with dot AI domains, and that you know there are different extensions. But I feel that the you know dot com is you know the preference eventually goes back to dot com. So there are these different trends that keep coming in. That's one thing that I have in mind for extensions. I also prefer domains which don't have any hyphens or underscores or like whatever i've seen a lot of domains with a lot of those dashes and hyphens in between you know stuffing keywords with hyphens that at some mm. point becomes a bit too much and uh, unique names are something that if you can have a unique name wherein you can also build a connection with a brand and be able to tell a story, then you're in a very good position. And that's essentially the same uh, thing that I followed with Maplings and Edupops. Mm. Because I literally own these names. If someone is searching for these keywords, then once I've built a brand, of course, then my .com domain is dominating these names. So I do feel that this is an interesting trend to explore outside of the keyword, which is, which is also another cool way of doing it. Mm. Then I also feel that there was... Uh, in between a trend of having um, domain names and then people would get a .com and then they would get all of the other extensions in order to maintain the branding. Um, and I think that that's, it's become less and less relevant now, as long as you can build, because search engines have become better, algorithms have become better, as long as you can signal to the search engines that, you know, you own this domain name and you have enough content, you should be more or less fine. It's hard for someone to just, if I'm running this business for 12 years, I don't have all the extensions bidding it for dot, for map links, for example. I don't assume someone is going to create an extension and then just suddenly get all my clients, you know? So this yeah. was like kinds of fears that people used to have and I had discussions about domain names mm. and these trends you know some trends keep going in and out but then some things like that the fundamentals are here to stay my advice would be to to our listeners um, and see if you agree would be to just have a domain strategy maybe your business does need to have some country extensions for example and that would improve your marketing maybe it doesn't but you have to think about that and not just, you know, go around buying all of it or none of it without yeah. any sense. Right. And I completely agree. I would also like to give an anti-example of a strategy that you should not have. Um, <laughs> go ahead. My friend did this. He found a very good name for his startup. This name was actually, it sounded pretty nice. And he wanted to get the domain name. So he said, just put .com and then he he saw it's not available. So what he told me was that I'm going to buy the other extension. And then when I raise funding, then I'm going to get the .com because oh. it costs so much money. And I said, dude, you're never going to be able to do that because <laughs> by the time you make it a brand, by the time you raise funding, the price is going to go up. So he didn't realize the fact that the prices will keep changing. The owners will keep changing and they will just wait for him to raise funding so that he can then go back. And I've seen other startup entrepreneurs do this as well. They're like, let's just start with .net or .ar or .whatever, and then we'll mm. slowly buy I mean, if .com is really expensive, then we'll buy it later once we have the money. I would suggest doing the opposite, you know, mm. either for a different name, if you don't have the money, if you have the money, buy the .com first, and then you can, if you need something else, you can always buy that too. 
I hear that a lot when I talk to people. I, I don't need the those common people can find me on Google. I don't need it. You're saying you don't need it, but you're going to end up paying for it because you are building that brand. People are going to look for that name. I have people that write to me about a domain name from a company that has dot something. They're writing to me about the dot com and in their email, they put the dot com. So they, they're getting their own email wrong. True. I mean, even browsers, you know, the shortcuts on browsers default to dot com, right? So like there's, there's mm. so many ways to actually make that mistake in fact i actually have a client of mine who did pay six figures to get a dot com domain name eventually because mm. it started a dot us domain name considering that their target audience was mostly us and uh, i was consulting them on their e-commerce so we scaled their uh, you know online store to like seven figures and then we said you know we've sold to everyone in the us so what do you want mm. to do now like we want to go to europe <laughs> You want to go to Canada, you need to buy all of those domain names. And he said, doesn't it make sense? I need the .com domain name because I really need it. And I said, yeah, let's get it. Finally, it was like six figures and we had to get the .com domain name eventually. If there was some scope before starting the store, he could have just modified the name a little bit and got a .com domain name, saved six figures. And, you know, e-commerce margins are not that crazy high. It, the money comes from the business, but at the same time, you could have saved a lot of money by doing that mm. up by spending a little bit more. Um, last thing, where can people reach you? Great. So um, LinkedIn is one of the channels that I'm most active on. My name is Rishabh Dev. Uh, Rish is my nickname there. So you can find me on LinkedIn. YouTube is another one. So people can go on my channel. It's called Maplinks. I think those are the places where I'm most active on. I've recently started tweeting, but not very aggressive. All right. Well, that's been a pleasure. Thank you again for making the time. Same here. You too. Take care.